Hi and welcome to level 2 of this course. Like in level 1, we will start with installing a node. This time it will be a second node in our cluster, so as to change the single node cluster into a two node cluster. In ONTAP there is a regular port and IP combination that you can find in a lot of other compute environments. But there is something else which is a bit unique to ONTAP. This is called IP spaces and broadcast domains. Now, I wouldn't have brought this up right now because it would be better to discuss this in a different level, but since we want to add our second node to our cluster, we have to talk about it. Don't worry, people usually say it's very complex, but we will treat it as, as if it were a very simple thing. At least that's what I hope. When we look at ports being cabled, ports are usually cabled to a switch somewhere on premises. All ports connected together is usually referred to as a broadcast domain since all ports can communicate at the data link level, which is just below the IP protocol layer. In ONTAP, we can sophomatically group ports together, so we can create a broadcast domain and add ports to that. Ports of different nodes can be in the same broadcast domain, because you can have multiple broadcast domains, NetApp have decided to put this broadcast domain in a container-like software device. So you can put multiple broadcast domains in a single container, or you can put broadcast domains in separate containers. Such a container is called an IP space. I promise you that in level 3 we will really dig into that, but for now we leave the functionality at that. We need to know about it this much, at least, because of the network settings of the two nodes. Here's the story. A single node cluster only needs a network to manage the node, and it needs a network for the data. If you add more nodes to the cluster, the nodes will need to be able to communicate on a physically separate network. They will use this network to share configuration data and other stuff. As it happened, NetApp wants this network to be a separate broadcast domain altogether. By default, when you install a single node, it already makes preparations for that. It creates two broadcast domains and puts these broadcast domains in their own separate IP spaces. So if you've set up a single node cluster, you will have two broadcast domains and two IP spaces, default and cluster. All ports will be in the default broadcast domain in the default IP space. So if we want to have two separate networks, we will have to remove two ports from the default broadcast domain and add them to the cluster broadcast domain. There we will give the ports a lift and an IP address and a subnet mask, and we check our work and then we set up a second node in Workstation or in Fusion. So let's have a go at that. So we first run Broadcast Domain Show and we see that we've got two ports that we want to use for the cluster broadcast domain in the cluster IP space. So we will have to remove these two ports from the default broadcast domain. So let's do that. We enter the port names and they will be removed from that particular broadcast domain. We check it and we see we've only got four ports left in the default broadcast domain, which is fine. And we're going to add the port A and port B to the cluster broadcast domain in the cluster IP space. So we enter the port names again, but now for the different broadcast domain, and they will be added to that broadcast domain. We check it, obviously, and we see that we've got two new ports in that cluster broadcast domain. Mind you, my maximum transfer unit is set to 1500, which should reflect the node that you add, otherwise they won't be able to communicate. So let's first open the license file. I'm going to be needing that license later. Then I open Fusion and I will import the second virtual machine. So I run import, choose the file, which is obviously in my Seagate lab environment directory, I select the OVF file and it will start importing it. Uh, but first I, I enter the correct location, which is node 2. Then it starts importing. Then of course we have to add two more network interfaces and change it to existing data ports. So we're going to change the first one to auto detect. Then of course we do that to the second one as well. And after we've done that, we will add two more ports to our second node so that we have four data interfaces, four data ports. So we add the first port, 
should be auto detect and we add we add the second and last port so we'll end up with two cluster interconnect ports and four data ports now before we really boot it we have to uh, make sure that we know what we're going to do uh, we have to change the system serial number and the boot arc and VRAM sysid parameters in the loader they have to reflect the correct serial number in the license file otherwise you will not be able to run any protocols and you will have problems with your disks assignments after we've done that we will initialize the disks and finally we can join the cluster also keep in mind that the MTU size of the cluster interconnect ports E0A and E0B should be identical to node 1 so in my case it's 1500 in your case it may also be 9000 so you have to check that so again the ports E0A and E0B on the first node have an MTU size which should be the same as the MTU size of E0A and B on the second node so let's do it so we open up our license file and find the second node in the cluster then we boot our node and interrupt it to enter the loader the first command we run is set env serial num and we enter the serial number then we run set env boot arc dot nvram dot sysid and enter the number again but now without the dashes and we boot we have to initialize the disk so we press ctrl c the boot menu will appear and we go for option 4 there it is and we press 4 and it will start initializing the disks we confirm it twice and it will reboot with a wipe config request I speed up the video a little bit and after the disk initialization uh, it will ask for a confirmation of the auto support warning again and we can start with the IP config on this node the management interface is E0C we pick address 97 and a class C netmask I enter the default gateway and now it tells me that I can start a browser but I'm going to remain in the CLI and press enter now the question is do I want to create or join a cluster obviously I want to join the cluster and here's that MTU stuff as you can see it defaults to 1500 and I'm going to stick with that see the second line cluster port MTU values will be set to 1500 so it can take several minutes to configure the network so I speed up the video again and obviously it fails so I have to enter an IP address of the other nodes cluster interconnect port manually so I do that so I enter the IP address of one of the ports of node 1 and it starts joining the cluster mind you after we're done we'll have to add the NFS license so that both nodes will be able to run the NFS service we want both nodes to be able to answer NFS request so there it is we have the login prompt and we could log in but I start an SSH session to my management interface and run cluster show so I see we have a healthy cluster of two nodes last thing we do is we add the NFS license that we select from the license file and we're done to summarize this module let's see what we just built we have added a second node to create a two node cluster with the following settings both nodes own their own disks for aggregates and volumes important distinction with a real production environment is that these simulators do not share the disks so it is a non-shared disk environment in real life this would be an HA pair we'll talk about HA pairs in the next module we see that our data and management ports are E0C through E0F these ports are all connected to the same network that is used for management as well as for data in real life it would be best practice to split that We've also created a cluster interconnect network between the two nodes. Ports that are used are E0A and E0B on both nodes. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know.